Times Up came out victorious this week. It is week number three of Team Combat League as the New York City Attitude look to remain undefeated. But they will take on the season debuting at DC Destroys Land by head coach Barry Hunter. In the second half of our doubleheader tonight, there will be the LA Tigers led by head coach Ricky Cortez catching up against the Dallas Enforcers led by head coach A.C. Bryant. Both be looking for their first win of the season. It is week three of the team combat league from Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino in Huntersville, Connecticut. Welcome to team combat league week number three. Welcome to week three of Team Combat League. Ray Flores alongside Amir Tyson. Coming up, we got a doubleheader. First up, it'll be the undefeated 2-0 New York City Attitude matching up against making their season debut of the DC Destroyers. Amir, as we get set for our opening matchup head-to-head, we got a doubleheader here tonight. But New York City, they are on a roll. They're undefeated 2-0, but they have a tall task ahead of them. The debuting DC Destroyers. Well, I'm from DC, so you know they're representing where I'm from. So I'm happy about that. But New York, you know, a lot of the fighters, they're just determined. They're ready to go and they're ready to win. And that's why they've been victorious two weeks in a row. So we'll see what happens. This whole thing's a really exhilarating experience. I love the concept. I love to be a part of this. And I can't wait. Speaking of the concept, here's how it all breaks down. If you are new to Team Combat League, we have six teams that are vying for four playoff positions. Coming up in June, they will match up in a semifinal matchup and then look ahead towards our championship in the early part of July. When it comes to competition, here is how it unfolds throughout the course of the night. Each individual matchup, both teams will go head-to-head for 18 rounds. We will go six rounds, then have a five-minute break, then go six rounds and have an intermission. Then we will finish off with the final six rounds. So 18 rounds is what we go. At the end of the 18 rounds, every single scorecard from every single round is tallied up, and then we will announce the winner as to who will go ahead and elevate their record and increase their weight in the standings with Team Combat League. Next year, though, we got some exciting news. Next season already, we are adding six more teams. So in season two a Team Combat League, there will be 12 teams total matching up. But tonight, our focus, at least in the first half, is New York City and D.C. D.C. led by head coach Barry Hunter. New York City led by Benny Roman. That is on the way coming up next. And right now, I send it to Paulie Malinaji, who's standing by with a member of the New York City Attitude, a fighter to watch here tonight. Clemente of the New York City Attitude. Two fights, two wins for the New York City Attitude. You guys are undefeated, bro. I, 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 let me know, what's the intensity like? What's the, what's the feeling like in that dressing room? Um, it just it feels like we're going to the board. You know, we usually think they say we're boxing a lot in the sport, but now we got everybody all together. We're feeling the army, you know, we're ready to tear it down. What makes you guys different than everybody else? Um, you know what it is? If you walk around New York, I think it's a lot of people keeping themselves, keeping them quiet, but then when things get started, Get started. So, yeah, see, yeah, too. of course, we talk with our hands here. Well, let me ask you something. You know, you've been a really big spark for the team. You know, while the team has a, a solid, fundamental team, you guys have done well, but you yourself have been a really big spark. What's the, what's the secret behind that kind of intensity? What makes you take in there? Because we, we see you attack like a pit bull, and you had any time you've been in the NFL, right? Well, you know what it is for me? Uh, I've never boxed to win. You know, I boxed to hurt. I'm, I'm in a fight when I'm in there. This isn't boxing for me. So, um, when I'm in there, I just, you know, Takes over, I'm ready to take him out. That's you heard right here from Malcolm Ante, one of the more exciting fighters in this entire league. Back to you, right? Derek Davis for the New 
division for KC. Please welcome KC and Gibson. In the match heavyweight division for DC, we have Dante O'Quite. Also for DC in the women's featherweight division, we have Dupe and Kinola. In the match lightweight division, Romello Webster. In the match welterweight division, Patrick Harris. Also for DC in the men's middleweight division, Keatland King. In the men's light heavyweight division for DC, Devon Nicholson. And rounding out the starting lineup for the DC Destroyers at heavyweight, Hasim Rockman Jr. Once again, DC led by their head coach, Barry Hunter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to bring it to the ring here at Mohegan Sun Resort in Casino. The undefeated 2 and 0 New York City attitude. Led by their head coaches, Benny Ramon and Ryan O'Leary. Representing New York City in the women's middleweight division, Jacob Douglas. City. 
hear that. I hear nothing to be getting all fucked. She's a black hair free. She's a black hair jet. Like, oh, my God, I want to say it. I like what you were saying. And then from there, we should, you know, she should be able to string her other shots. You said, by the way, I'm still having to jump up because I get all four shots. That was just landed me a nice right on the left cheek of Douglas. And if you're not going to get all four shots, some veins give some changes of looks for that pop because they get so comfortable being first. Because that pop is starting to really get comfortable being first because she's got no resistance coming back most of the time. Or when she's on the ropes, she's in her body shots. For the women that will end our first round, we are going 18, so we're going to go six rounds, have an intermission, then another six rounds, have an intermission as we take a look at some of the action. Gentlemen, what we saw, the action was fast and furious. Yeah, and the sharp kind of left hand there by uh, Douglas, as you mentioned, during the round, right? But well, overall, you see Douglas waits a bit too long, and it's been, it, it was Pavlos most of the time pushing that issue. Yeah, I think that was one that round. So you can see that. It's almost frustrating. It's almost frustrating because Delta, as you can see, has the ability to get all the She just doesn't get all the way. You can see the Delta. If she would put herself a little bit more, get all the shots, she probably could do some stuff. For sure. So here is Kobia Brady.
good work there by Rock Matalo. But I'm thinking that if you don't know, try to breathe, he comes back and tries to push the ball. Um, he's he's probably got to adjust the technique a little bit. But uh, certainly, the determination was there. I don't think every single the second time, and the second time around that they'll go for it. All right, so round three. As we now enter the welterweight division, Derek Davis and Darius Jackson. Darius Jackson representing the New York City Academy. Representing D.C. Derek Davis. Now, I like Jackson. He's got to be able to do Davis. He's got to be able to drop off the line and water right here. He's got to be able to do they are going out of here. Welcome to Team Tom Bentley. If you are just new to Team Tom Bentley, welcome to this concept. And as you are seeing, big straight laps being landed by Darius Jackson of New York City. They don't respect each other's punch. They're not going straight at each other. But the best thing going was to be strong right here. Yeah, but they have to go up on the left hand by Jackson. I'm talking about holding the other really strong. So it's still good. A little back here. So a couple of things to throw one on the other off. We're trying to get the old speed like this. Drop a fake here and there. I'm going to really disrupt the tempo. We're going to put a shot to right. But he came in. He needs to go to the body. He needs to just try to go right over there. Right over there. Right over there. Right over there. Well, it is evident that Darius Jackson is using his height in his way to his neighbor. A beautiful left upper cut. The lever by Darius Jackson. Look at that Tony there. Wow, good defense rolls. Oh, another left upper cut by Darius Jackson. But he's out of money. He's out of money. He's out of money. He was working and looking at Jack with an egg in his face. I hit him once in a few months with a few. I'm telling you, I've seen Jackson moving more and more every single week. He's got a good fight in front of him. I thought he gave his legs a good fight. He just hit the tip, hit the front board, just out. He just gets just got the stronger guy in front of him. Jackson's going to go there. He's like, oh, good on him. Right there, yeah, yeah, good touch there. He's going to come here. He's holding the head down with one hand and he's going to be up with the other hand. Jackson's Jackson has found a home for that left upper cut. Eric Davis, we're going aboard, and he's getting the last two clips. One thing about Davis is you get that ball down in front of his hand a little bit, uh, to block those upper cuts, man. Right by the club, they have down. Those upper cuts are really clean. The other part of Jackson. Yeah, Jackson's not talking to his body. Oh, beautiful left to the body by Darius Jackson, and he comes upstairs. Attack the body, and the head will fall. He's trying, man. He's just leaving. He's actually landing a couple of jump shots himself. He's just leaving. Jackson is better. He's going to the bit. 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 Jackson is just very cool and dominated in his career. He's using the impression of a game as against him. What a performance. He looks as good as he's going to be stuck in your back. He looks like he's going to be back to back rounds. Like the rounds are rough. Yeah, man. See, this kid must have his game Tony right now. He's doing more than I mean, this is some nice work on the inside right here. I'll tell you what, Davis is going to have to make a judge the next time he sees him because he is, he's going to soften the up and it's probably going to be the difference in the round. He's got Jackson on the cover. What do you think about Jackson? He's going to get to work in the body. Okay, for the South East to start to the first three rounds for New York City. As we'll go back and examine some of the action from the third round, Darius Jackson and Derek Davis. Davis, so Jackson is a little sharp. So Davis did some good work himself, but Jackson was just a little sharper. Knew how to use his height a little bit better, even on the inside. Knew how to play spots a little better. Uh, sharp defense on the inside, rolling and then making a play on the counters. Help us left hand there on that counter. So middleweights now, Quincy Williams from D.C., Wasim Carter for New York City, Paul, you got an official scorecard. I can imagine you got New York City had three up. Yeah, I got a three up. It's not for lack of quality on D.C. It's quite funny that I love how Williams is using his jet. He's keeping the distance. A shot to the body by Quincy Williams of... I see. I guess I'm sure he's checking that foot there on the part of the car. Well, he's trying to get busy with his own jet. So much for a feeling out process. That's what you're talking about. It's a lot of part of it. They do not believe in a feeling out process. They want the engine to start fast and furious. That's exactly what you get every single week. Both sides are trying to start fast. Just with the New York guys have been a little sharper. Again, and again, you got a, a strong fighter like Quincy Williams. He's just the activity of Carter now. He's going to two or three jabs. He's going to the amount of jabs. Or he's just throwing anything. He ends up turning a couple of them into a people like 
decided to go take him out. Really shocked. So some bad action you see. See a little thing, a little thing with the left hand, and coming over the top of the right hand there by Komatov. So he can he 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 can he can do 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 he can I mean, it may be in, in this half, it's not even a matchup, but overall, because that's DC, because they're not down, so I got the, I got DC, I got the knockdown to that one in the first half. Right now, I, I got a one point in this, in this half. I just do it face the same as what's going on, but I give it first. So we got Patrick Harris representing DC. He's wearing the white blue, wearing the green, and blue is none other than Charles Garner. The shot on the counter there, right? By Garner. Garner has shown himself to be really effective in the game so far, we've seen in the first two weeks. A little tactical battle like he's two heads so far. Neither man is like an enemy. Oh, look at that. That was a straight left by Patrick Harris, but Charles Garner was off balance. That was a good shot, but he didn't have much needed. Quite some open right there by Harris as well. I like how Harris trying to go to the bottom and right to the head. Confuse their opponent. Left behind. Left behind. Left behind. Harris returned by Charles Conley. Great tactical foul. He had both of these guys really thinking in there. Nice right hand by Charles Conley. That's his best punch. I like how he faked it. The left hand downstairs and used it to come upstairs. All the five, four years. He wanted to send it out with right hand there by Garner. Nice to turn body shot by Harris. Right now, he has a great feeling for the And who doesn't love a good East Coast match? We have your seat at DC. Your rich box and seats. Both of these guys get confident with their body right here. They're both playing with their shots. They're both in respect to each other. Garner comes back up. And right on downstairs by Charles Garner. Yeah, he turned south one. He came back with a big right hook. So Patrick Harris went fishing and he got popped with a right on top of him. So the New York City attitudes, Charles Garner. In fact, we'll hope so good that he stayed in the South Coast stands. Now let's see how the second game of the round goes. Now let's see how Harris deals with the chain of stands on the guard of Garner. Well, Harris appears to be on a bunch of as he just got tattooed with the right hook. And the right hook left hand there as well. And Garner's rhythm is completely changed in the second half of the round. Right now, Garner's got boxing. He's getting his punches back. He's doing what he wants to do. I think he's going to be his game. And that is a little bit right now. But now Garner goes to the bench, so he is down. He's just playing with him. Look at this. He's shrugging the shoulders, going from the bench to the south wall. All right, good. He's feeling it. And Harris drops some things like this. He's got Garner in a position where he's feeling it so much. He's in a rhythm. Drop some things. Just drop that rhythm. And he's not just drop punches, but if he doesn't think, he's not just going to only allow Garner's confidence to grow. Right now, Garner has his face in time. Time he does. If I could give an award to Swag his fight tonight, it would be Charles Garner of the New York City. I don't think with the old DP hairstyle already. I mean, seriously, that is one swaggy dude. As he demonstrated that inside the ring, what player inside and outside the ring for Charles Garner? It, it, his check look, his movement is what won him that round. Well, you know, after a first half that was very even, and as we had mentioned, I mean, you know, in the second half he turned his off and really switched up things a lot. And that was the left hand by Harris early in the round. But as the round progressed, Garner really got going. If you look at guys, it's an interesting match. I'll tell you what, I was at this trial. I was at this trial when they had the box. He took their first spot in the New York team and came closely out the spot. But I bet you King, the King and someone finished business here. Let's watch these guys spar each other. And they gave the spot to King Jelosi. It looks like King won the month of DC. He was trying out for the DC team and got the spot. So I'm wondering if this is why this looks. Now, with no knowledge, just gave you the background on this. So let's see how this round starts. When somebody says you're not good enough to play on my team or fight on my team, and someone else signs you, and then you match up against the team that said you're not good enough to have and to possess mine. Yeah, I mean, we've seen that, you know, in sports. 
and you know, guys will be in their own team. Can you get those guys strong that way? But of course, again, Mike is gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna be motivated for this matchup. I'll tell you what, these are middleweights and they have the best seats. So that'll be the first one to see. Yeah, right now, there's no influence in the game. He's working for us right now. And I am a Cangelo seat. They're at Rocky. They're going on and he's starting to know. Yeah, Cangelo has a snappy game. I think she should have that way. If I'm in, I'm not with feet using more of the jam. Set King up a little bit for the bigger shots. You're throwing wide shots with King. You're going to you're gonna wind up playing his game. And, and King is, again, I guess if King is motivated, because like I said, you can get the spot on the middle seat. He's going to be motivated to, to, to let your opponent you know, be made a mistake. Juwan makes one mistake that I've seen 
This is in the heavyweight division. Round 12, this one's scheduled for 18 this past weekend. The undefeated New York City Attitude, 2 0. Oh, great, right now, it's right here, Bailey. Hold back. Hold back. You want the most a little lack of days, but hold up. He didn't have to go out on the defense. And while Bailey was in the room, really sharp and intense, he went with those little shots and made the shot. See, Bailey's ready to fire back. He's got that that explosive to his punch, as we just saw there. Oh, that's a good body. We heard that here in the broadcast position. Bailey went with the ball. Bailey, I think, is looking for the knockdown. You know, he wants all his points. He needs to destroy his own. He's going to show up. Yeah, the company's going to be there. He's going to show up a little bit. But I'll tell you, you let a guy like Bailey, he's not going to get caught. He's 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 going some sledgehammers coming in. So, in the last 20 seconds, we're going to come up with the game. Let's see if we can get the game. We're going to win it back. He's on the front of the field. He's on the front of the field. Will it be enough? 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 I started noticing about the last 30, 40 seconds ago, he started to get his jam going when he landed a couple of shots. And you can see the body language of him is about to change. And he's going to try to keep this momentum going here. Newman now attacking the body of Norman Healy. Oh, no right hand, able to pull right on the left ear of it. Change Healy. Change Healy. Keep firing right back with this combination. I'm going to check the right hand. I'm going to check the right hand. Ron Trump has come to a close as Norman and Earl Newman look good. You're part of the Ron Trump, you're going to be a And I just heard freshman Neil Neely was controlling him initially. And the time turned and he was through what you saw. Yeah, Neely early on was really sharp. It almost looked like, it, it almost looked like, like, I don't know, like, like, like he wasn't ready to fight in, the, in this round. Almost like they called him, like, hey, you're in when he didn't know he was in. Um, and, and he started the round out really like a dancer. But um, as the round progressed, he saw Newman start to get things going a little bit. Got his hands going. I don't think he ended up doing enough to get himself back in the round and give the round to Neely. But we saw something that maybe you'll look forward to when these guys see each other again later in the competition. So the first 12 rounds are in the books between New York City and D.C. We're going to come back. We have six more rounds to go. We go 18 total rounds. But right now, I am privileged to be joined alongside by the boss, the CEO of Team Top. Ahmed Shoot, Ahmed, it is great to be with you. Week three of Team Top Medley, this new concept. What a refreshing moment and a refreshing start, uh, you know, invigoration to combat sports through the first three weeks. What are your thoughts on what we've seen so far? It's amazing, guys. I mean, the response has been outstanding. I mean, I think we're going to be going here. We're going to be going to season two. It's exactly the one we're going to be at. So, the response has been amazing. You know, the championship rounds, as we saw today, what happened in the first six rounds. I mean, in the sixth round, we were the world champion coming out of the heavyweight out of New York City. We were undefeated. And everybody got all the bets on the heavyweight champion. And look what happened. It comes out and there was a knockout. That's what we love to see, Paul. And I tell you what, I'm going to die. I'm going to I've been excited about this matchup. What do you think? As the, as the, as the night progresses, what do you think? How do you see the, 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 our third and final round with New York and D.C.? What do you think? Hey, guys, look, I mean, this is a very close match. Yeah. And I, D.C. D.C. really brought it on. I will tell you what. They started slow. And I like the way they got themselves back in it with the night. Late in the first half. I mean, those, those knockdowns, those fights were like, the second time over there. New York fought their way back. And they did the whole thing. I saw. I got D.C. up by a point. I mean, I, I can't wait to see this third part of the match of last I really can't hold the winners apart. No question about it. What is one thing to you know, you hear about big fight jitters, but I think it is becoming a thing with team combat league jitters, especially when you're making your game. Because it 
in the onset. You're starting to learn it in your footy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we can see you see tonight in the second half of our doubleheader. We are going to perform a lot better. When it comes to DC, it was a new concept to them. And once they saw both their guys get in there, I think they really started to flourish on them. That's right. You know, like, I mean, well, I'm not surprised. They have a very experienced coach on their side. You know, very hunter. I mean, this is all. I wasn't expecting nothing but what they came out. You know, as they settled in and too much later rounds, DC's turning up the game on this thing. Well, we hear about expansion in Major League Baseball, Salt Lake City. Why is the Major League Baseball team? But there's also expansion in Season 2 of Team Combat League already. Right now, we have six teams that are buying more playoff positions. But I've been the success. The excitement, the viewership have been so much, and you're already adding six more teams for season two next year. Is that correct? That's right. Well, you know, like, this is amazing the way the response is going on.
gentlemen, what action that we have witnessed. That action from that round, you see what happened on White's and Dewey's like to throw one white shot and then so he almost a concert and he's going to throw the other second white shot even harder. And you see, if you notice, he throws the first shot, as a hook, she goes up even harder over him, right? He throws the hard over him, right? He goes even harder hook because her hips are already placed to whip back around. And that's kind of how she, she designs her own like, a combination. That was a big right hand there. But the top goes. No, I can notice. I, I call her Lee. I can mix up the names, but I can notice she won the round.
So he's trying to have three hands so he can get the kind of stuff. So he's listening to get really questions. Thank <laughs> you. 
and they just need me. They just need me. These rounds are not all these rounds. They just need to fire back. But you still get to the part of the two words you have when you start bringing it to the hands. You bring it to the hands. Harris is just holding on the left from Harris Jackson. And Jackson has been a bit more selective in the 16th round, but he's still picking apart Patrick Harris. He's talking about the number right here. He's going to the same way. He just has to go over the ring and make general shit. You know, he seems like he knows me from the ring and he's going to be right here. Jeremy Jackson is not ready to be out of bunch or any other way to start things. I think he's demonstrated that over Patrick Harris of DC. That he can't be able to match with his video. He's been just a little better. He's been a little bit challenged in different spots. But again, he's getting a little better. So he's working on all these positions so he can try to count him back. And he's done a little bit better job this round. But it's been Jackson, I think, who's still having a battery in this round. Let's pass that to the base of Miles underneath the right eye of Patrick Harris of DC. Oh, big shots for Darius Jackson of New York City, who's feeling himself. He cuts gloves. Good round. Good guy. Good round. 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 Good skills for both those guys as well. Thank you. 
The judges have talented I'm, everything up. I remember we were saying we thought Newman hurt Neely at the end of the last at the end of the last round. And, yes. and it seems Newman Neely has not been as aggressive to start this round as he was the first time around. I'm still wondering if maybe Newman did get Neely's attention. Because Neely's destroying a lot more respect to Newman, who still looks like a musical to me to start this round again. Well, Newman though is a technician and when Neely he was having a way upon her in the first half of their previous round. I love it. Newman's throwing a jab, we see them one at a time. Neely's throwing it three or four times, so I like how he's throwing the jab. There's a right to the body by Earl Newman. Newman's starting to get started. He's the, he's the problem, Neely has to. Newman gets started again in the second half of the round. This time, Neely has to build up to the lead. So Neely's going to have to work here on good body shots there by Neely. We both are in close distance. I think Earl Newman is doing his outlaw ring generalship to be able to win himself. Have Norman Neely a bit at distance and off balance. Prior to the trip, the switch, that was a good home. Um, trip with Brian Newman. Great trip. Neely left over to the body by Neely needed that also. That might have been. In a close round, that's big. That's a big combination there for Neely in a very close round. Yeah, good, good body to pay combination by Neely. Neither man has landed anything flush or clean toward a decisive round in their favor. Good right to the body by Earl Newman. Probably the best punch of the round between both. He needs to stay out of the corners and get back to the middle of the ring like he's doing right now. He's driving back Neely. I mean, Neely's giving up a lot of ground. Good punch to Neely. It's going to be all the fight for him in the last 30 seconds. Let's see. Oh, there was a clash of heads between Earl Newman and Norman Neely. A couple of them to the body by Neely. They have to dig deep because they know that the one who wins this round is victorious. So they really have to dig deep and, you know, bring the only thing. Right to the body again. Two right hands in the final 35 seconds for Earl Newman. Ooh, and Neely is going to get rid of the fence. Oh, he's going to Wow. <laughs> Good round. Right, you know what? I'm going to give it to Neely very close. But I would hate to be a judge. That was, that was, that was, that was a good, that was good at change at the end of the round. I really think that um, Neely won the round with it. Yeah, I give it to Neely. It's easy. Yeah, it's Neely on the ropes. 
Yeah, good shots to the body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Newman went attacked the body well this, this round. But Neely also had his, his good moments. That, that last exchange was really a lot of big punches. Neely, Neely, Neely had a better ability to put combinations together. You saw there, most of that was smothered, but still looks good for the judges. And Neely had a little bit better ability to put punches together. There, even in the last, the last seconds of the round, you see Neely going in off the shorter shot. He was doing the his only shot there, but I thought Neely had made more than Neely had to just a little bit here. That was a beautiful look at the end of the Okay, Paul, let's go ahead, and I'm not a mathematician, and how do you have this one unfolding as 18 rounds are in the books? The matchup has concluded. Don't forget, we still have the second half of a doubleheader with LA. I've got in Dallas. I've got a very cold 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 I've got a I thought I gave that way from the deal. So you had you had on New York coming up in two days. Yeah, I got it. 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 One seventy four. You know, say one sixty nine. These guys. It's safe to say these two teams will be rivals. I'm gonna say this, and they face each other. But it never be self seen who comes up on top. The score card is getting announced by Ray Floyd.
is the toughest kind of work that there's no to do. So, so it's a team to watch to find three. You know, the DC had a lot for the team, a lot more than the first two. That was your head, which is really for the boys. was not as great as uh, it should have been because everybody was nervous. How do we do it? How do we do it? You know, um, I believe today is going to be different. We've been training properly. We've been doing everything, simulating everything that we do in the fight. We've been doing the training, and now we're going to perform here tonight. Uh, tonight, that will Is there any particular um, stylistic changes to the training that you guys do for something like this as opposed to, you know, the average professional fight you'd get it ready for? Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, the thing is that I've been telling our fighters is that we, we're not going out there and box six rounds. You, you can't go out there and waste time trying to set up everything. You gotta go out there and try to do everything within three minutes. You know, box and put pressure, and and, be, and go out and be first. You be first. They throw two punches. You come back with three, four, five punches. If you, if everything that we do in there is gonna be first. So tonight, win. We're gonna win. All right. Our performance is gonna be great today. Sounds good, man. We're looking forward to it. Right back to you. Nothing more exciting than what the team come back and brings to the team. One round bounce, eight teams across the U.S. The idea of this is so unique and so new. It forces the fighters to skip the field off rounds and then get right to the action. Like you said, we can shot here. It's just a small thing. Nobody can be our mind, so nobody can be our The mind only is the mind of the boxing box that you have in the world. One round, get you guys, give it all. This is going to be the future of boxing. I'm very excited to watch this. Or not this tournament. This series. One round. All what you got. Any minute, any second, anything can happen. I got a three-year-old kid. I'm just ready to change my family's life. What's up? All right. See the band of the ABF champion that award of. Oh, I want to take it. It's great. It's cool. It's great. It's great. There's no way anybody can compete with us. And it's every year for coming to book the match. Just the ABF, so let's go. The opportunity that a lot of these fighters will be having is a six-figure pay, health insurance. There's endless stuff to it. So I've been in energy and I ain't gonna get to you. I've been trying to get you down. I ain't gonna get you down. I'm 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 gonna get you down. 
Alongside Amir Tyson. Well, we just got done with New York City matching up and colliding against DC. But right now, Amir, we look ahead at two teams who are looking for their first wins of the season. They both competed in week one, came up a bit short. It is LA going head to head against Dallas. So much on the line in the second half of our doubleheader. Yeah, I mean, a loss is always haunting, so they're going to use all of that momentum all of that drive from losing and learn from it and try to come up victorious. So you just have to learn from mistakes in life, like in life in the ring. You learn from it and become better. And hopefully they can become better pugilists doing it like that. I look at when it comes to how Team Gone Badly shapes itself out, and I you really parlay it to the NFL. You don't want to go down 0-2 on the season because that is detrimental. The goal is for all the teams is to make the playoffs. There are only four playoff positions, six teams vying for it. So two teams are going to be left out of the playoff positioning, and this is a very important showdown for both teams in L.A. and Dallas. Yeah, I mean, whoever wants it more is going to win. That's for any sport, and especially boxing. It's Imano, Imano, one against one. So once they get you in the ring, it's you and the other opponent. So... It's up to them if they want to win or not. We could talk about it, but we have to see what they're going to do. If you're just joining us, we want to let you know, coming up, when it comes to Team Combat League, 18 rounds, six rounds, then a break, six rounds, then a break, and then we get ready for our final six rounds. At the end of the 18 rounds, every single scorecard is tallied up, and then we will determine a winner based on our scoring system. So every single round is so critically important to the success of your team. We now said it to the third member of our broadcast team, Pony Malinaji, with the fighter to watch from the LA Tengus. So, you guys got to experience the first week of Team Combat League. You came up just short, uh, but you got the full experience. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how that felt that going into it that first week? Go to the con la experiencia en la primera semana de Team Combat League. No pelearon en la semana pasada, pero estamos regresando en esta semana, semana, semana número tres. Bueno, primero que nada, buenas tardes para 
para los dos, es decir, un, un, un orgullo tenerlo acá en la entrevista también. Así que muy contento por, por la primera fecha, fue todo nuevo para mí. Eh, yo estuve relacionado también eh, con, el, con la selección, pero no tuve la oportunidad de, de competir así en equipo, que como digo, una nueva experiencia para mi carrera y la verdad me sentí muy bien y muy contento por toda esta nueva experiencia que estoy teniendo en mi carrera. Bueno, primero de todo, quiero decirte que es un honor estar aquí y estar aquí y estar aquí. Pero esta es una nueva experiencia experiencia. En la semana 1, pude realmente inmersarme en lo que la Combat League es todo sobre. Y realmente me siento que like esto es uh, fantástico para mi carrera y me gusta el concepto. Hablando de ese concepto en sí, ¿cómo fue estar en el ring por un round, luego volver a casa y luego volver a casa? ¿Cómo fue que eso fue? Considering you're a, a veteran of, of, of several professional fights, you're one of the biggest veterans here in Team Combat League. How was it getting, having to get out of the ring and getting back in the ring and, and, and having to basically warm up and getting your mind acclimated to this new concept? Go and sit this seat. ¿Cómo sentiste peleando por un asalto nomás y de ahí tenías una pausa y de ahí regresa para otra pelea o otro asalto en el cuadrilátero? Porque tú eres un veterano de peleas profesionales, pero esto es un nuevo concepto en el boxeo. Sí, como te dije recién, fue una, 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 es una experiencia muy linda para mí. Eh, nunca, nunca he combatido un round, ni siquiera siendo amateur. Eh, sí que he, he ganado por lo cabo en los, en los primeros rounds en las peleas profesionales, pero esto es totalmente diferente, así que para mí, es, como te dije hace un ratito, es una experiencia muy linda, muy nueva y que va sumando a mi carrera, así que la verdad que es algo muy lindo también poder compartir un round nada más. It's a new experience, it's a great experience, it's one that I feel is going to benefit my career. And what's interesting is that even as an amateur, I never fought one round. I have fought one round or less as a professional when I win by knockout, but that's not the intention. But I do believe that this is beneficial to my career, and I am enjoying what Team Combat League is all about. Uh, plans for tonight, plans for us, aren't you? Los panes para la noche. ¿Qué quieres hacer? Y bueno, nada, yo ya, nosotros esta vez venimos más preparados porque la primera vez eh, era nuevo y no sabíamos bien cómo era. Así que siento que estamos mejor preparados esta vez. Y bueno, nada, salir a ganar. Yo tengo una mentalidad de, de ganador. Yo creo que esto es una experiencia linda para mí. Yo sé cuál es mi objetivo eh, a nivel profesional, que mi sueño es ser campeón del mundo. Eh, pero bueno, como te digo, hoy estoy aquí, mi realidad es esta, y yo hoy vine a ganar, y mi equipo vino a ganar, así que estamos dispuestos a salir a ganar. My dream is to become a world champion, and I think this is going to help me along my professional career. But what, what's interesting about this is that, you know, we have experience from week one, so we are better equipped and more, we're better prepared, you know, as we head into tonight's event. Uh, I think we're going to be a lot sharper. You know, we have, I have always had a winner's mentality, and, and that is the goal. That's the objective for us to come out here and get a win, and I do believe in my team. Thank you, Alejandro. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. Y Argentina salió campeón. Argentina salió campeón mundial, así que estamos muy contentos y, y muchísimas más ganas también. And Argentina came out victorious, and yes, we have to continue to provide more energy like I will do tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bohemian Sun Resort and Casino here in Augustville, Connecticut. This is the second half of our doubleheader. Both of these teams are looking for their first win of the season. First, we want to welcome the LA Tendus, led by their head coach, Ricky Budes. Here are your boxers in our starting lineup. As we welcome from the women's heavyweight division, Lachette Lopez. From the men's lightweight division, Brandon Mendoza. In the men's welterweight division, Franco Ocampo. And middleweight for LA, it is Glenn Pennis. In the one heavyweight division, Martina Pejita. In the men's heavyweight division, Sia Sia. Also 
Okay, so now it is the bantamweight, not bantamweight, the lightweight division with Brandon Mendoza and Randy Canada. Brandon Mendoza for LA 10 use. Randy Canada for the Dallas in a four-star. This already, the action starting fast here at Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. I love Kenny's dad. And goes up, going right after Randy Kennedy, out the Dallas Enforcers. Think about Mendoza, you know, Kennedy has a nice jab, no longer reach, but you know, Mendoza needs to jab in, work the body, and the rest of it. Who really did the check for what kind of I mean by Mendoza? Kennedy, trying to be more intense on the inside, probably got the quicker hands. He's going to be up to Mendoza to get that time. He can use that physicality, trying to chase that man right now. Yeah, he's going to be rushing in. He's going to just punch his, you know, for less of a distance. And just swinging wildly. He was off balance. It was Brandon Mendoza of LA Tigers. I like up again. He just lets them go out and smoke them. Fly right over each other. He's like getting too off. Oh, 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 it's got a very hurtful, jerky style, does Brandon Mendoza. Yeah, a lot of times guys like this, you know, when, when they fall in, they, it's, they get there before the punches. So when you get there before the punches, your head is getting there first, and then you punch the following it. You know, you, you, it could be a, a risk of clashing the heads. You always got to make sure you're leading with your punches first. Also, when you're leading with your head like Brandon Mendoza, you are high contact fighters. He just ate a big right hand. Compliments of Randy Cavanaugh. Good head to make combos like that. The candidate has uh, the sort of punches to be able to put punches together because he got the shorter shots, better balance. And those are not for lack of trying. It's better technique. It's not, some, it's not always for lack of a matter of will, it's also a matter of skill. Yeah, I think the technique probably is what's going to be the day for right now for Kennedy. Yeah, Kennedy is a shuffle defense, stepping back into the range. He knows he's trying. Kennedy is just a better overall athlete as we are under minutes ago. He's just an overall better athlete. His feet are set more. He's moving well, whereas Mendoza is sort of kind of, it has an unorthodox style, but he's falling around all over the place. Yeah, he's got to be a bit more deceptive on the end. He's trying to get more his way inside. He's just trying to clean in as opposed to, you know, changing levels, maybe dropping some things, maybe just stepping in, stepping back, and then stepping back in harder. You know, it's, you want to use various forms of deceptiveness. You're just trying to creep in, especially in the same level, you're going to wind up like this. He's going to see everything. He's going to get more confident, nice little sharp counter right here. I love how he works. I love how he moves his head and body. I love how he also does that with so many combinations. Exactly. Over over and head right from Randy Kennedy as Mendoza fishing. The Kennedy always a step ahead of the Brandon Mendoza. Which is a good thing. He's positioning on the inside. He's also scary. A lot of effort from Mendoza, but better, smarter boxing on the front of Kennedy. I agree. So, round two in the books. Paulie, how do you have it so far? We've got two rounds in the Dallas so far. As we go back and revisit some of the work from Randy Kennedy. And they have the shorter shots there. Fine range, also you know, change your levels, change your distance, even on the inside, really even able to roll the shoulder a little bit. And have windows are missing. Also, coming up next, right now we have Franco Ocampo for LA Tengus. For the Dallas Enforcers, Andre Ewell, Ray Forrest, Paulie Malinaji, Amir Tyson. Here at Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. Off next week, a bye week. We're back in two weeks with week four of Team Combat League. What I noticed with Ewell right away is that he's a much longer reach, so he just needs to you know, keep his distance and do that jab and then keep that right hand right after. He just hammered Franco Ocampo with a right hook. See his shoulders absolutely massive. Yeah, it doesn't look like a lightweight. A nice little right hand on the left ear compliments of Franco Ocampo. 
Close swinging for the fences. Oh, look up, sir. And it's all balance. Yeah, he will use that physicality. Oh, he's a big guy. down goes Greg Long. Couple from the left. Supplements of Andre Ewell. Great kick. He's a quick shot. Hey, well, he's been lifting up that intensity. Wasn't all clean shots, but he just did. He overwhelmed him with shots in a big left hand land. Yeah, yeah, Chris puts him. That left hook reminiscent of that of when Brian Mendoza clocked Sebastian Fedora last weekend. Let's see how he finishes it. So this is a big round for Andre Ewell and Dallas extending their lead. And now LA is setting themselves up to hold here. Both teams, LA and Dallas, are 0 and 1. They're both looking for their first win of the season, a straight left from Andre Ewell upon Greg Olcampo. Oh, 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 Tati waves it off. It says no, it's no. That's a major point swing in favor of Dallas. Andre Ewell with the stoppage over LA Tempo is Frank the whole tempo. Yeah, I think they'll avoid some suspensions. That's why they stop it after two knockdowns. Um, and this is what happened here to O'Campo to knock down 10 7 rounds. So that's totally distraught right now, but it, it's part of the game. Hey, listen, if you can finish somebody off after a round, that's impressive, and Andre Ewell looked tremendous tonight. Yeah, once he got that first knockdown, you can see he's got more confident in getting more aggressive. You realize Ocampo okay, didn't really have much resistance for him. So he got, you, you can see from the beginning of the round where he was sort of being more technical, and then the end of the round where he was just, you know what, he, he's just, I'm going to throw everything in the kitchen sink at this guy because he can't handle it. And he was right. He ended up scoring two knockdowns, and he ended up getting a 10 7 round on this option for his team. So Andre Ewell so far. Is the MVP of the night for the Dallas Enforcers? What a start for AC Ryan and his team. Coming up next, we got the middleweights. It'll be Lad Pannon who is looking to stop the bleeding, quote unquote. That is not Lad Pannon. That's Silva. Oh, yes, that is Alejandro Silva, who is in action, taking on none other than a Mauricio King here of. Dallas. Yeah, LA had to call him the goon. You know, so, so, so was undefeated record. Probably the, 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 the best fighter on the LA team there to stop the bleeding. He's here so with Alejandro Silva, you and I, I knew the translation. And Silva so said in this particular matchup that with this being their second meeting here at Team Combat League, Ooh, the better equipment. And what took five where he's king. Look how King's throws body punches and then he's going right to the head of the field. He's like, he's like, look, they'll hook right Silva. Shook up. Oh, yeah, Andrew Silva. That's the thing about a veteran like Silva. He'll hold his position to try to make you pay. He can't keep trying to get off a lot of shots. He's got to be careful. So I wonder if Ricky Funes elected to go with Alejandro Silva, likely his stronger fighter, to stop the momentum on Dallas. Absolutely. As of right now, I think King, you know, since he's in the ring, he landed the harder punches. He's getting easier for sure. He's getting off more for sure. When it comes to the silver landed, the silver landed, the bigger shots, you know, he's still all the fight for. He's got more than half a round to go. I still think it's very much. What do you think about, right? about Silva? He's, he's a guy who's more accustomed to the longer rounds. So he's one hope to show the overhand right, probably the best punch of the round between on the fight. And then I really point out Glenn's the bigger shot because it is significant. Every round is scored individually. That makes such a significant impact in the overall of the challenge. The King's legs buckle a little bit. He held on. You know, King, right to the guard. As the round progresses, Alejandro Silva gets stronger. Yeah, that's the thing. That's what a veteran does, right? He's probably more accustomed to going for four rounds. He probably is used to getting things started this quickly, you know, so it's even a challenge for a guy like Silva. He's got a great combination. Right off from Alejandro Silva. The kicks on him a little bit longer, you know. I wish we saw more of those in the box. Boy, that was beautiful. Set. You know, that's one of those punches that he isn't throwing as much as he is used to. Some of the old school guys. 
Wet plug from Alejandro Silva. Yeah, a little wide on that one. You see what he's trying to do? He's trying to catch and shoot inside the push of King. As his point, just keeps trying to get a little wider. Yeah, so he needs to shorten his punches so he can get to the target quicker. He needs to shorten his punches, and that, that's what's going to lead to the goal. The champion win. Are you still King throwing wild, looping shots, and Silva's fighting those openings to be able to counter him? Yeah, and if King was doing it wild that early on, but they were his speed was compensating, right? But now, as he's getting a little more arm weary, you see Silva landing in between them, climbing in better. And also, Silva has a tight defense where he's walking well. Oh, and the fourth round, and that was a big round for LA 10 because they needed that, and I think Alejandro Silva stopped the momentum of the Dallas Enforcers, and now, we get ready for the light heavyweight division. One thing for LA Tempus, Andrew Yates of Dallas. But we go back and examine Alejandro Silva's work against Mauricio Pico. Yeah, you see Silva is, uh, I keep saying, really short. A good little uppercut on the inside, followed by a right hand. He keeps his punches a little shorter. As King was the faster guy, but he, it was a little bit more sloppy. It was, and, and Silva's tight defense on the inside prevented a lot of the stuff from getting through, especially as the round progressed. Like a lot of Silva's punches at the end, especially in the middle to the end, going through right through King's guard. So, you know, hit, not get hit, get the punches and get out of there. So we got Martin Higuita for LA 10 Goose, led by head coach Ricky Funes and Andrew Yates of the Dallas Enforcers, led by head coach A.C. Ryan earlier tonight. New York City victorious over D.C. 172 to 169 as New York City improves 2 3 in all this season. He looks a lot smaller. He looked to be some wet glasses smart. Big right hand by Andrew Yates. Just start off. Oh, there's shots. Right? He beat the line. He's got the shorter shots. And Yates got to be careful. He's coming straight up on the inside. I don't know what he's doing there. He picked his whole, his whole self up. He got himself caught. A little sharp counter right. Now we're on the pizza. He's got to be physical with the pizza. He beats him, looks like he could probably be a goalkeeper in soccer, guys, with his strength. Big right hand that lands upon Andrew Yates. Yeah, Yates is going to stop trying to touch him. He touched him in the beginning, he touched him to touch him again. He didn't want to be a part of it. He got to fight with him. Ooh, I guess, but Yates is too high up. I mean, that's the thing. Yates is standing too high up on the inside. Go from the upper pit, great to this. He just to make himself a small target, but they're not that close range. I don't mind the guy staying up high from long range. From my close range, you gotta bend those knees a little bit. And then you have to do that. He's just throwing punches recklessly, but he can see the best technique and skill when they get hit on the front. That's gonna affect him. That's gonna affect him during the fight. Affect the game. Ooh, good punch. He's straight in. Yeah, this is one of those things he's gonna have to go back to the gym. Learn to bend those knees on the inside way too high up. He's getting busted up on the inside. He's giving a lot of effort here. But none of those punches are really landing. He's just trying to use his physical body to push him even back to the ropes. But where he's just smothering himself anyway. And then he's using his jab, followed by a right hand. And that connects upon Andrew Yates. Yates, he has no leverage. Like, like, you know, so he's been bending his knees. If he bends his knees, he would have more capacity. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point, too. I mean, it's also for offense. It's mean, not just the defense. The fact that he's not bending his knees is also causing him defensively as well. He's too high up. That's like if you get a. Say a kid that will make strength, he ain't gonna be in trouble because he's taking some clean, clean shots. It's a nice right hand that sprays Andrew Yates under a minute to go. They have no fifth round. They both look exhausted, but they gotta push through. You know, one more minute. Mark Nikita, Andrew Gates, and another big round for Elliot Tenkus, who didn't panic, and they could have done it, falling. Instead, Ricky Muniz has rallied his troops. Yeah, he's rallied his troops. They got a lot of work to do. That 10-7 round is really going to hurt them. Oh, hey, it's a big deficit. Good defense by Mark he keeps uh, moving his head just enough to stay out of the range of Andrew Gates of Dallas. Final moments of this fifth round. As we head down the stretch with Martin Higuita and Andrew Gates, a solid round for Elliot Tenkus, who are facing an uphill climb down by a considerable margin to the goal. Oh, and the shot is a right by Martin Higuita to punctuate the round against Andrew Gates. So, and you, and you can see like the skill of Professor Boxer and the um, home. It seemed like a, a brawler just throwing records. He has to go back to the gym ball, like you said. Yeah, his legs, you know, do what he's good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He's got a lot of work to do. I'm fundamentally, technically, I got LA getting the 
Miami, so it's the back end of the last two rounds of winning. But unfortunately for LA, it's a three point round in there, so I've still got a uh, 48 45 in favor of Dallas, thanks to that big three point round on the knockout. As we go back, and here is some of the work of Marty Gita, who is trying to get the LA Tennis back into this. He was skilled. Yates was throwing punches, but he was moving his head and throwing correct punches at him. So you see us trying to get off to a quick start here against Andres Montoya. You know, Sia Segelia from Combat Sports is my name, Segelia. Yes, yes, a David Tua, a David Tua building. There's going to be a lot of David Tua building. Yeah, okay. What can land? Explosive shots. Sia Segelia. That's one of those mighty modes, Segelia. Segelia. Taking on Andres Montoya of Dallas. You know, these guys are the jab board. This is Dr. Erecto. See everything off the jab. You know, more straight and direct punches. You see, my play is probably trying to establish a little bit more distance here. So, Liga wants to be on the inside. But it's even, even still, you're right. I mean, so Liga's just still trying to use his jab to get inside. He's trying to creep in. Top of the jab. You know, that big right hand hit the defense by Montoya. I'm stressing on Toya needs to use his feet and his legs to try to frustrate the veteran in Saliga. A couple extra pounds on Montoya. I don't know how much legs he's going to have. He's using it too much, but he's boxing the ground so far. He can't that distance. You know, at the heavy weights, they're going to get fatigued quicker, so, you know, they should throw everything they have right now. They should let these shots get a little bit. One thing to worry about, too, is Saliga. He's fighting with his head on the ground. It's, it's a big coconut head there. You don't want anything to get with that. You know, I don't know. I don't know. He's got to put you up. Pretty good. Change here. All right hand for Andres Montoya. I think Montoya is getting the better of the limited exchanges that we're seeing. It's the only thing you could be doing here is cutting off the ring. He's not, he's not the greatest guy in his face. He's got Montoya to sort of get around him. It's the will cut off the ring. He's making it, it, it look like a lot easier on himself to be able to close that gap on Montoya. Yes, the looks like he's thrown all that he's had. He is so tired and exhausted. Yeah, it's way it's hurting his ability to close that gap. Montoya's able to have that shot selection. We can use that jab. It's a little sloppy, but Montoya with his jab is able to create some spaces for the rest of the punches. And how many times, especially that we saw in the mid-2000s, uh, the Rico brothers were in need of flight based on the jab alone because of their technical ability. I'm not saying that Montoya is anywhere near the Crystal brothers, but he has been done. But the educated left hand is one that's not for Montoya. Yes, he said it's a good right hand. It's all been it's been the educated left hand's ability to Show that race the way he wants it. I told you he's playing in the better, cleaner shot. I think that's going to work out unless something dramatically changes his next 25 seconds. Nice overhand right from Andres Montoya of the Dallas in four series. Don't forget, we have a bye week next week. We're back in two weeks with week four of Team Combat League. New York City atop the division, three and all. Six teams vying for four playoff spots. The end of the month of June will have two semi-fun matchups in the championship in July. I think that was a fight for Montoya down the game. Montoya looked good for the Dallas Enforcers. He knows that he was likely the better of the two. And that will end our first six rounds between the Dallas Enforcers and L.E. Tengus. Amir, take us through what we saw. Yeah, Montoya, you know, he's a younger boxer, a little more skilled. You know, he took advantage of um, Saliga's fatigue, and, you know, he just pieced him apart. You know, not get hit with the boxing. Yeah, I got a, at the end of these six rounds, I got a 58 to 54 in favor of Dallas. Keep in mind, there's a big three-point round there in favor of Dallas, which really has made uh, the deficit a bit bigger for LA than the third round with the stoppage we had. In the, in the third round. So right now you have Dallas on top 58 to LA 54. And the big reason for that is Andre you will stop it to the front of the combo, which allowed uh, Dallas to get a uh, 10 to 7 round. So, so probably overall right now, what's your score? 58 to 54. Uh, yeah. So that's how Paulie Malinacci has it. Then. And guys, with there being six teams, you know, two teams are going to be left out in the cold, will not be participating in the playoffs. And I'm no rocket scientist by any stretch of the imagination, but if you make the playoffs, I assume you get a playoff bonus, more money for participating. So there is a lot on the line, not only from a city standpoint, not only from a fighter standpoint, from, from a financial standpoint. It's prize play.
fight. It's called prize fighting for a reason. You're fighting for a prize. You're fighting to get paid. I'll tell you what, you know, uh, your main goal is always to be a winner. That's typically, you know, uh, when you start boxing, I would say we all want to be right, but when, when you're a winner, you're not always the fun. That's the thing you want to make sure. You want to focus and fight hard and train hard to win. Just get to the you want to have some confidence in the game. You see what I mean? Thank you. 
I like the Purdue because she faints too. You know, a lot of she's, she's dropping some foot faints in there as well. I mean, there it goes again. She has to change the levels. There it goes again. You see, she's. <laughs> I tell you, I, I like how we trying something different though. Because the conventional stuff's not working. As she ran in, at her, at, at her, she was trying to land a shot before she turned the sound point to a nice right hook. And she absorbed a straight left from the new scope. She got a little too aggressive and she paid the price for it. Every uh, the new scope, she's passing her with the punches right when she's coming in. The next coming in, reckless thing, not really guarding her hands that well. And she's tacking her every time she does it. She does a nice style. I'll tell you, she does a little subtle thing. You got to step back, jam right there. You know, again, it's, it's a good play. Ooh, good sound play. Yeah, good jab. It's almost like a jab look that we saw out of that new scope. Hey, look, she said, oh, nice. Yeah, that's that's right. that back up for me, for me, in trouble. She walked into a counter right hook and then went straight left in. I, I tell you, I'm very impressed with this. Some really nice footwork, nice sharp punches. Good effort by Rabi, but Reduce was uh, a class more, more talented than possible. Yeah, Reduce was a nice one. They were very well. I knew where they were going. Yeah, perfect. Well said. <laughs> you and I were together enough as we take a look at some of the action from this women's featherweight class. That really was a subtle thing. That was a good right hook game by Rabi when he turned south. But it was a subtle thing Reduce does. You know, see the drop, the drop and change the level a little face step. Back. Yeah, that's what she's doing. Yeah, she's doing that. 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 She's doing now we got Juan Funes of the LA 10 who's colliding against Avron Rand of oh, the Dallas Enforcers. Good punches by Funes, right to the body, height combination, he's letting his hands go, that's what he needs to do. Funes is relentless in these first 20 seconds. I thought he said he needs to do. Well, the answer back is Avron Rand. Funes trying to throw it inside of Rand's combination punching at Rand's final one. So Funes needs to watch that from Rand's counter punches because he comes in recklessly one time, he can tackle him. Ram is being the aggressor here against Funes. It is Funes who is trying to be more of weight and, and try to counter that of Ram. You see Funes is trying to catch him. He's trying to keep that tight guard while Ram throws all those punches and he's trying to punch him between them. See this story for that? He's not stopping from the other side. He's not going to the round story. Yeah, Ram is just literally throwing caution to the wind and saying, hey, I've got to bring the fight to Funes. Yeah, I don't mind that game plan. If Funes seems to have the better sense of time, he's going to say, you know what, let me bury it in activity. He's going to win the round with this. And this is why Funes is winning the round as we speak. But I don't think Funes has landed anything significant. I still think the fight hangs in the balance because I, I don't think either guy is going to seize control of the round one way or another. Oh, no, this will be the first. Now we got Vlad Patton matching up 
as he will take on Diane Debistre of the Dallas Enforcers. So, Paulie, I believe that Dallas is probably increasing their lead from your standpoint. Yeah, in these second six rounds, I got a point. But again, for the first round, for the first six rounds, I mean, you know, it was, I had uh, Dallas on four points, so there's four points on my card. Maintaining their lead, but that can all change. Glad Madden now for our LA 10 News compared to that of Diana Demistre for Dallas. Both teams are 0-1 this season. We are in week three of Team Combat League. The top four teams will qualify for the playoffs. There are six teams total. Next year, season two, we are expanding to 12 teams. I love how Pam and he's throwing two and fades and throwing. He keeps, keeps on throwing his jab right in his face. We'll see what he can do from that. Throw more punches and punches, more combos and that, we'll see. Hey, the brother by Pam, he seems like he's setting up a little bit more neatly. The bench rate looking for something, but he's, he's, he's throwing shots from a bit too far out. He's a lot of times he's keeping his hands on the pad. You can see he's trying to set things up. And he's relaxed. And in his relax. Oh, there's a left hook down, goes Jeffy straight, but no. He says Arthur Mercanti and LA Ten who say, come on, you can't get that to We'll go back and take a look at that replay in between rounds. We are literally at the midway point of this head-to-head matchup between LA and Dallas. It is Team Combat League. Close round here, Patton, slightly edging it so far. That pre-strike's had a little bit busier. And it's been Patton's ability to be a little bit more educated with that lead hand. The left hand has been a bit busier with it while Depp is trying to force it a little bit too much instead of setting it up. Yeah, it feels much more relaxed when he's throwing his punches, which gives it, it, gives it faster and it has more impact right now. If you're more relaxed, your punches are going to be more. There's an overhand right by Depp is trying to by the left hook. Right here to echo your point is that Depp is is playing, he's looking for that one big shot. He's throwing every shot with bad intentions, whereas uh, you look at him and he's more relaxed and he's just calm. Yeah, he's trying to set it up and take it. The best thing you could tell he has power, you could tell he has power right when he lands his punches, but you know, you know the, his opponent is just taking them with foolish, he's outboxing. Also, demonstrates telegraphing his power shots, he needs to let his punches just flow and go off the jab. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Overall, you know, the idea of that, the is going to be there. You see that, right? You want to engage. He's looking to turn the arm. There's no jab. No jab. There's a jab there. It looks like it hurt me. But again, it's not, the, the consistency on that jab isn't there. So it's going to impede your ability to set up the combinations. There's a lot of hand demonstrating. That attacks the body of Adam. But Adam absorbs some of those shots. Ooh. Mm. Well, the demonstrator is fighting way back in here. And last minute of the round. You never know. All the judges have it. He might decide to go with the more aggressor, right. for the, you know, in terms of oh, heavy strain. Every judge says he's different when you have to lay that way. Right. Well, <laughs> that'll end the night. If that hand in that right hand, if that ball was uh, that was straight back, you don't want to do that. He just went up and it went down. Go back and take a look at it. it. We gotta see the feet though. Yeah. Okay, so I, I was just told by Mike Mazzulli that that was a knockdown. That was definitely a knockdown. So Mike Mazzulli has ruled it a knockdown. And credit to the head of the commission here, Mohegan Sun, for coming over. Take a look at the replay. Pull your thoughts. I can't see the feet. Okay. And, and the shot landed at the same time. He made contact right before he went down. So it looks like a knockdown. He has a shot. Let me see here with the feet. Let's see if we can. Here's the feet. Mm. Oh, that's a that's a that's a knockdown. That's a knockdown. That's a that's not done. So Mike was always has ruled it a knockdown, so it's a bad round. I think it's a correct thing, you know, because uh, if, I, I why I needed to see the feet. Because if, they, if you trip and they're getting pushed over the feet, it's, it, it's, it becomes iffy, but there's no feet there. I mean, that was momentum, a good hook there by Pan on the check. All right, so light heavyweights now. Angel Lozano for LA 10, who's Kenneth Peoples of the Dallas Enforcers. Now, Paulie, that 10 8 round makes it a bit of a closer matchup. Oh, absolutely. It's definitely bad. Now they were stalling for a big round because, again, I mean, they, they, they lost a 10 7 round in the first half. So they, they're looking to get themselves in any way they can. So a two point round really, really makes things a lot closer here. Yeah, well, what's your approximate you know, score at this particular moment? Like, what do you um, with I think with that it, I think it's, um, I got it out of my cards. I think I've got it um, Dallas up to right now. Okay. okay. So you have Dallas ahead, and LA's cutting into 
the Dallas advantage. Angel Lozano for LA 10 is led by Chico Trigger Zunez. And Angel Lozano starting off very sharp. Sticking the jab, fixing in the right hand, followed by the left hook. Everything's coming through the off the jab. Dallas coached by A.C. Bryant. Both teams looking for their first victory of the season. We are off next week. We'll come back in two weeks from now, April 27th. We'll be united with Cynthia Conti. We'll all be here at Mohegan Sun Resort. There's blood on the face of blood. There might be. I feel about that. It's up a good round. I don't know if you're going to Flash your pen. I got to see if there's a good jab to the chest. There might be a little bit of balance. You can move apart. He's still the boxer right now. He's having a good jab. He's moving. It's circling well to the There's a left hook by Angel Lozano. Another left hook. Lozano's using his height and his range to his benefit. Yeah, he's allowed. And people's allowing him to the circle as he chooses. People have to step up a little bit. He's got the height disadvantage. He's got to get on the inside of him. Yeah, he has to bring it. He has to build something. He has to build some punches to make a difference on the ground. Because that's right now. But also, Paul, to echo your point to further it, is that he's not cutting off the ring. It's one thing I throw punches at. He's not cutting off the ring. Yeah, do that with your footwork and your body movement. He's kind of waiting for Lozano, and Lozano's kind of just bouncing in and out as he chooses one. Like, he just kind of stands at the center of the ring. And there's only a TV there, and he's trying to attack him. He goes back to the center of the ring. Well, he's allowing Lozano to just completely circle and not really stepping with Lozano and trying to cut him off. To the right hand, Lozano the, the cleanest punch of the round from Angel Lozano. Good round here, by the way. You know, we're not 100% right. And again, LA, they're getting the punch. LA's getting themselves into this fight. You know, 40 seconds left, unless the people can, you know, once they're back in the last 40 seconds, it's going to be a Lozano round. I want to go back and take a look at that right hand from Angel Lozano. He landed flush right on the jaw of Kenneth Peoples. You know, I, I already oh, thought he won right another right hand for Lozano. I already, I already thought he won the round, but those two, you know, they were emphatic right hands. So, you know, I think, I think he won this round. Yeah, he's confirming it now. Listen, I want to see Angel Lozano again. I can't wait to see him compete in our second half. It's only way people, people look so lackadaisical in this round. You know? it's like, Almost disinterested. Yeah. Mm, good jab. Very rhythmic on the part of Lozano. Good boxing, good jab, good head movement there as he slips and slides. Lozano was never in any peril whatsoever. He controlled this throughout the 180 seconds in the round. Yeah, I think Lozano, he won the round. He outboxed him. He landed the, you know. It's going to be really interesting. I tell you. punches. I think he just won the round. If we can go back and take a look at that right hand from Angel Lozano upon Kenneth Peoples. I guess boys. we'll get ready for as... That beautiful right hand from Lozano. We'll see it moments from now. That was, that was, a, was, that was, a, that was a good jab to the chest there by people. Who sent Lozano off balance. I'm waiting for the right hand. Ooh, no. That was a good same, same, same jab to the chest. Nice move. Oh. There's that right. And we will begin in the heavyweight division. Round 11, scheduled for 18. Cashton Young for LA Tengus. Adrian Taylor for that of Dallas. Look at Taylor go right after Cashton Young. Throwing what they got. Let's bring it. Big boys. Adrian Taylor, if you can believe this, a former sparring partner of Errol Spence Jr., welterweight champion of the world. <laughs> Spent some time training under that of Derek James in that tremendous gym. Derek James, the trainer of Errol Spence, welterweight champion of the world, and super welterweight champion of the world, Jermel Charlo. I, I, I like from Young that he just brought the fight right away. Right when he got out of the corner, he brought the fight to him, and then he turned around, now it's a fight. And, and that's the thing. I mean, I think uh, with with Young, he he's he's used to boxing welterweights like Spence. Big, big hook, double hook there by Young. I think, you know, it, it, it allows him to be settled into a faster pace than heavyweights are accustomed to being. Also, why am I not shocked that Spence also spies with heavyweights? Right? I mean, well, you <laughs> that know, at the time, though, Adrian Taylor was a cruiserweight still, for Dallas. Now he's still. a full-on heavyweight. But still, that's a that's a big boy fighting someone against yes. a welterweight. So. I mean, look, that's just kind of the beast that Errol Spence Jr. truly is. Yes, sir, he's a monster. 
And, and when you're learning under guys like Spence and Charlo, you pick up a few things, especially in that gym with Derek James. So Adrian Taylor looking to be quite an asset to the Dallas Enforcers. But Cashton Young is being busier than that of Adrian Taylor. Yeah, absolutely. There's a left hook for Cashton Young. It's a really hard round to call. Like it's just, it's I, even to me. Well, but what do you think, Paul? Well, no, I think I, I think uh, uh, Taylor's been much more busy, and, and I feel like honestly, Young is way way too much. Now good, good jabs there. Double up on the jab for Cashton Young. Right hand over the top. Ooh, a sharp right counter for Adrian Taylor. Yeah, I as feel like, we have under a minute to go. Yeah, I feel like y Young is gonna have to have a big final round. Good body shots there. Ooh, good shot Adrian by Taylor. Taylor with a sweeping left hook, Ooh, good followed players. by a left hook and a right. Ooh, good exchanges here from both guys. It's almost like, like Young doesn't know how to go find it himself. He needs Taylor to close the gap for him, and then he punches back. Look at this distance. You, you're a guy who needs the round. Young doesn't go get it. He, he, he waits on Taylor to close the gap for him. I think a lot of it has to do with fatigue, and he's a big big boy, so you know, those punches. He, hasn't, those been punches. That, he hasn't been that active, though. It's been, ta it's been Taylor who's been more active in the round. Yeah, so that's not even the Cash to Young pretty much has been moving scenery and a moving <laughs> target for Adrian Taylor to be able to land upon. Again, I mean, a, a lot of the times, these rounds are decided by who wants it more, you know? You, and you sometimes you see that yourself, you know? The viewer at home, you see, you know, you see skilled guys, you just see they just don't go get it. They don't. They they, they, they don't want to work as hard as, as, the, as the opponent, and they cost Ooh. them the round. Overhand right for Adrian Taylor. That'll end the round. I mean, Taylor threw in combination the whole round. I mean, he, he went and won that round because he wanted to win that round. Also, when it comes to how the breakdown of this fight, Adrian Taylor took it as a fight. I felt like Casting Young thought he was trying to warm up and be in sparring mode in many yeah. instances. Yeah. yeah, good point, Ray. I mean, who knows? Maybe he is used, used to being a sparring partner. And that's what it looked like to me that Cash Young was trying to just get some good work, but it's not about getting good work. It's about hurting your opponent, especially when your team really needs these rounds. You know, they are behind and you're trying to get, get get out of a deficit. It's the hurt business, Ray. You know, so they got to do some hurting. Yeah, your dad knows a few, a little bit about that, right, Amir? Yeah, definitely. Coming up, we have Austin Wolf for um, LA Ten Goose and uh, Waylon Bailey of the uh, Dallas. Enforcers. Ooh, good job by Bailey. Bailey starting off using his boxing IQ. The most fundamental punch in the sport is the jab. Ooh, right hand by Waylon Bailey. That rocks. Austin Wolf. Bailey's the way bigger guy. He's a way bigger puncher, so he should just use that size and, you know, just crowd him, just get right up to him or be more aggressive. You know, use that weight advantage. Well, faints by by Bailey, trying to get his way in. I think Austin Wolf needs to weather this initial storm of Whaley, Ooh, Bailey or Dallas. Kind of right, kind of right, right there by Bailey. Yeah, they kind of catch and shoot by Bailey, and that he's right. getting confident. He's throwing some big shots. Waylon Bailey with the right to the body of Austin Wolf. Wolf is a little bit too high up on the inside, man. Again, I, I mentioned, that, I stressed that a couple of fights ago with a couple of guys. When you're inside, you want to bend those knees for defensive purposes. Obviously, for attacking purposes as well as you have more leverage. But for defensive purposes, on the outside, you stay up high, okay. But on the inside, you want to bend those knees. And and that's the prob a problem Wolf has right now. He, he gets close, and he, he stays a little bit too upright. And Bailey's been able to land some good shots because of it. Yeah, Wolf needs to get any opening he sees, he needs to attack it right away. Because, you know, Bailey's just, you know, as of right now, I think he's doing the run. Also, too, if you're Austin Wolf, when you have the height advantage, you got to be able to move your head. Because Ooh. against a smaller man, you have your head in a stationary point, you're going to be susceptible to that overhand right. Especially if you're going to be that at that close of range. At least if you're on the outside, you, know, you control things with your jab, you control Ooh. the race now, but you see a left left hook He's close for Waylon Bailey. He gets in close range, and then he stays up high. That was a headbutt right there. Flash your head. Right, there's blood or there's a mouse on the left cheek of Waylon Bailey of the Dallas Enforcers. Yeah, I think I think it was a headbutt because right when I said that, it started bleeding. And, and again, Wolf having a problem on, on the out. He's up too high, gets caught with punches on the exit because of his inability to keep his positioning down low when he's at close range. Ooh, there's a right to the chest by Waylon Bailey of Austin Wolf. Bailey just the most do more dominant fighter in the fight. You, you know? see how Wolf, you see how Wolf they throws a combination, but he's coming up as he's throwing. You know what I'm saying? Like 
Right there, he had a good chance of you know, throwing a nice combination, but he, he brought himself up as the punches got to the third or fourth punch of the combination and allowed Bailey to, you know, not have to take such big shots and also allowed Bailey to be able to fight. Ooh, overhand Ooh. right, knocking out the mouthpiece of Austin Wolf. He's got to be careful, man, no. to protect himself at all times. He tried to call his own timeout there. He's lucky the referee allowed him to. The thing about Bailey is that he, he counters and he has power, you know? So overall, skill-wise and power-wise, he's just dominating the fight in both aspects, in my opinion. The 12th round comes to a close. A big round for Waylon Bailey of the Dallas Enforcers, likely furthering the lead of Dallas over L.A. Tengus. Good exchange. That'll end the 12th round. So, 12 rounds are in the books. Six more remain. It is Team Combat League, week number three, here at Mohegan Sun Resort and Casino. Earlier tonight, New York City victorious over the DC Destroyers, 172 to 69, or to 169, I stand corrected. As let's go back and take a look at some of Ooh. what has been terrific action here. Yep. Yes, I would say I've been saying ooh and all night long too, Amir. Yes. It's been so much fun. Great fights, man. And look at that. That was the finish there by Andre Ewo over Franco Ocampo. He dominated him this fight, man. Well, that was a 10-7 round, a significant momentum shift for Dallas as they started off strong. And Paulie is tallying up his scorecard as we speak, so I will allow the master to go about his business. But, yeah. Amir, this has been fun to watch. Yeah, I literally was going to ask Paulie what he had on the scores yeah, you know, at this we'll break. We'll wait for Paulie to let us know when he's tabulated everything. But And then we look at Sia Seliga, who looked like he came up short against Andres Montoya. And also, Yana Verdusco. Likely getting the upper hand over Anna Maria Verbeek of Dallas. But listen, all these fighters are coming out. They are bringing their best. They have 180 seconds to go to work, and then another fighter enters the ring. I love this concept. Yeah, I love it because you don't know who's watching, right? You know, so these guys, they have to know that they have to bring it all. That they have to bring everything. You don't know if PBC's watching. You don't know if top ranks watching. You just have to. You know who's watching? Everybody's, everybody's watching. watching. Everybody's watching because it's a Thursday night, and guess what? You're sitting at home. Exactly. You're chilling, thought, and everyone hey loves guys, fights. I'll, I'll be honest. This is a cool concept. If you're missing, if you're a, if you're a boxing fan, if you're a boxing fan and you're not watching, you're missing out. You're missing really, out. you know, you're, when you're a boxing fan, you're always searching out boxing and what's on and what's not. You know, and during the week, you know, uh, I, I know I work at Pro Box TV every two Wednesdays. We got our yeah. shows there. But here, you know, we're on a weekly basis. Obviously, next week we'll have a bye week. But yes. it's, it's, it's not only that is it boxing, which boxing fans will watch any boxing, but this is terrific boxing. This is really intense boxing, high, high level boxing, but demanded action boxing. You can't win in, in Team Combat League if you don't go for the action. But also, it's so it automatic, it's automatically entertaining. Look at the coaches. Dewey Cooper for Las Vegas. You have A.C. Bryant for Dallas. Ricky Funes here for L.A. Barry Hunter of D.C. There are quality coaches, and when you think about team sports, the most successful teams, and we, and we got New York. out of 10, New York, exactly, Benny Roman yeah. as well doing a the, marvelous job. The thing job. about these coaches, they're great leaders and great mentor to these fighters, so they're going to push these fighters even more when they don't, when they want to quit, when they get tired, when they get fatigued. They, they're going to they're gonna push these fighters to the next level so they can win. And also, too, as getting you know back to the point, Paulie, is when you think about you know, terrific teams, championship teams that are successful. Likely they have a terrific head coach in one way or another. And every single one of these six teams with Team Combat League have quality coaches that have been in the trenches yeah. in big world-class prize fights before. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and and not only that, they've they've got gyms where they train tons of fighters out of their use of the psychology of boxing as well as the technical aspect of boxing. Very, very good work. By the way, I've tallied up my scorecard. Okay, score so, so what Dallas. is it, Paulie? What, what is I've, got Dallas, Paulie? I've got Dallas up 114-111 right Wow, so 114-111 is how you have it in favor of the uh, Dallas Enforcers. And, and keep in mind, there was a 10-7 round in favor of Dallas in the first half, and then there was a 10-8 round in favor of L.A. in the second half. So you have da Paulie Malinaji has Dallas on top. 114 LA 111. Yeah, so that was a my three point on, on the, advantage. What you're looking at on the screen is the first six rounds, how I had it. That was after.
that was at the end of the first half. I had a 58-54. In the second half, I, I, we, I tallied up my second six rounds. And so combined, I have it at 114-111 for Dallas. Paulie, I'm no mathematician, as you very well know, but I think based on your ability to tabulate and calculate under pressure, you should be given something, my friend. I mean, you know, give this man an honorary master's degree or something like that uh, to be able to tally things up under pressure, Amir. I mean, you got to give the man I, respect. I was say the new Harold Letterman, you know, <laughs> Pauly. Well, well, I mean, look, he was literally within two points of our previous matchup, but you had the right winner in New York City. But let's go back. If you just joining us, New York City tonight in D.C., if you didn't see it, you need to go back and watch the replay because yeah. that was a riveting affair in the first half of our doubleheader. And not only riveting, I think these will be two teams to watch uh, in the title hunt. Really, you know, at the end of the season, we have the Mega Brawl, you know, where, where the, we win the whole championship. I really think, um, although we've, this is only the first time I've seen D.C., I haven't seen New York tested the way I saw New York tested tonight. New York has been, you know, head and shoulders above the, above the rest of the league so far. But D.C. gave them a run for their money today. That, that, I, I believe these two teams are going to be buying for the champ. Based on what I've seen in the season thus far, New York and D.C. are going to be two, the two teams buying for the championship. I don't think they've seen the last of one another after tonight. Two cities with a lot of pride, D.C., New York, you know. That they're really prideful. You got roots in both cities, I right? I mean? roots in both <laughs> cities. So I'm watching. I'm looking at Paulie. He's New York. I'm DC. But all my and I'm in between from New York. both of them. Look, I'm yeah. neutral. Being from Chicago myself, I am efforting a Chicago team. Though would love to see a team from the Windy City in season number two. Yeah, you know that would make deserve. you happy, right? That would make you definitely happy. Absolutely. The Chicago team is on board. Well, some of the action here from New York City. But guys, you talked about Thursday night fights. So next week we are off, but then we run it. For four or five straight weeks. We're going every week from now until the middle of June. And then we get to the semifinals in the middle of June. So the top four teams, we have six teams competing as a whole. They are vying for four playoff positions. The top four teams will advance to the playoffs and get into two semifinal matchups. They will both compete against each other for the right to compete for the championship in the Mega Brawl. That'll happen in July. Now we get set. For our final six rounds, buckle up. This one is going to be exciting with L.A. and Dallas. Both teams vying for their first win of the season. We take you back inside the ring and get ready for our next matchup as we prepare for this final six rounds. And gentlemen, get ready as we have Iana Verdusco and Jennifer Miranda once again going head-to-head. -head. You know, I, say, I think it's safe to say it's an exhilarating night of boxing so far, right? And you know what? It hasn't even felt. I mean, we are now in the final six rounds. It hasn't felt like we've had over 40 rounds over the course of the night. Not over 40 rounds, beg your pardon. I told you I wasn't a mathematician. But we've had over 20-something rounds, guys. Yeah, and we see, let's, speaking of rounds, I mean, Lissette Lopez wants, wants it back. Oh, no, this is, uh, this is Verduska against Miranda. Yeah. They matched up They matched up Verduska against Miranda because Miranda had more success against Lo uh, Lopez the first time around. And for me, Verduska really skilled and talented. I think this is a better matchup for LA to make this adjustment. It's going to be interesting because Miranda still has a height advantage on her too. Yeah, Miranda's aggressive. She's coming at her, but Verduska, you know, she catches her counter. She throws good hooks. I like her hooks. Yeah, Miranda, I tell you what, Verduska with the southpaw stance, and again, you see the change in looks. The things I was bringing out the first time I saw her. Real skilled change of look. You see how she, you see, no, she pulls with that lead hand, tries to hold and catch and shoot. Good right hand there to the body though by Miranda on the way in. As there's a clinch now. And, Pauly, to echo your point, Verduzco was successful against Ooh, Verbeek, good punch. whereas Lopez, or Miranda, was victorious over Lopez. So now you have the two best women's featherweight going at it against each other, representing their respective cities. I'll tell you what, the, it, it, the good check hook there by Verduzco, it, this is something where intensity also wins you rounds. But as far as pure skill, the, the, Verduzco is the most skilled of the females I've seen so far in this league. Now, it's hard, that doesn't mean she's necessarily going to match intensity with every single opponent so far, as this round itself is close but as far as pure skills he does all the subtleties that I, that you don't always see in fighters you know a lot of times when Verduzco oh, comes in take down as well when, when Verduzco <laughs> comes in Miranda just clinches her and grabs her immediately that might be part of her game plan in this round what do you think Paulie? yeah I mean you see now Miranda's trying to get her to go straight back there because Miranda wants to use her height Verduzco's not I'll tell you what second time Verduzco uses the takedown effect you remember last round Miranda, uh, when Miranda was against Lopez, when Lopez got close, Miranda did a good job of smothering her. Good round there. I think Verduska did uh, just enough to win the round, but I tell you, that was a close round. Sometimes so, you can't tell these guys, these guys or, or gals apart in just one round. Right, 100%.
And you don't know who's, how the judges judge it either and what they look for. Well, it all depends on if they favor aggression or they favor the more cleaner, effective punching. And now we are in the lightweight division for L.A. It'll be Sean Bates. For Dallas, it'll be Randy Canada. Also, uh, uh, Benny, uh, uh, Ray, we don't, we don't want, we mentioned Benny Roman for the New York team. We, don't want, we also want to give love to Ryan O'Leary. Well, of course, you absolutely. Know? They're a 3-0 team. A, that's, a, that's a great coaching tandem over there in New York. Well, look, they obviously have two quality coaches, and who doesn't be able to love having two guys that are brilliant at what they do in Ryan O'Leary and Benny Roman. There's a reason why New York City is 3-0. Right now, Sean Bates for L.A., Randy Candidate for Dallas. Sean Bates has not competed tonight. He is Ooh. fresh, but he just got Good. tattooed with Good. the combination from yeah. Randy Candidate. Candidate Can two pieces right away. Yeah, and Candidate had, had caused the cut in the first, the first go-round to, to his opponent. He's landing the cleaner to, to shot. Mendoza. Right Mendoza. Yeah. He's landing the cleaner shot. They both came out ready to fight, but you know, Canada, he's landing the cleaner, harder punches right now. Canada looking very sharp. And even defensively, you know, he's alert. He he's, he positions himself well. Doesn't doesn't make a too big of a defensive move, and that allows him to be able to fire back off that defensive move like he's doing here in the last few seconds as well. Bates trying to close that gap. He's he's gonna ha he's having the same problem Mendoza has. He's not deceptive enough on the closing the gap against Candidate. You got to be a little bit more deceptive against a guy like Candidate, who's very reactive and also gives you a different target as he show as he gives you as he knows how to pull back. He knows how to get onto the shots, and he also knows how to change levels. Good ring generalship, defense. Candidate looks timing. very good. He looks better this round than he did the last one. Yeah, way and better. I, and I tell you, he's warmed up, but also it's the same kind of. At same kind of aggression he's getting from bases he got from Mendoza. Nice catch and shoot there as well on the part of Candidate with a catch in the body shot and then firing back. But Bates is also doing the same mistake, making the same mistake Mendoza made. Where he's just trying to force his way in, not really deceptive, not giving Candidate anything to think about on the way in. Now he's inside here, but even on the inside here, Candidate does the better work. Well, at this stage of the season, especially with this being the second go round for both teams, you're starting to see some stars emerge. And when I look at the Dallas Enforcers, Randy Kennedy in the lightweight division is certainly one of those catalysts for that team. I'll tell you what, though, Bates in the last 30 seconds has gotten off some good shots now. And beautiful left hook by Sean Bates, as he puts out, and digging a left hook to the body. Ooh, but again, look at this. But again, you got to be alert after you throw punches because Kennedy is very sharp with that catch and shoot. He's, he's ca good body shot by Kennedy. Bates giving as much as he's getting taken now. He's trying to he's trying to break him mentally. Double left hook to the body by Sean Bates. And again, will and skill. This might be one of those situations in the last 40 seconds. Bates may be able to take it back if he's able to bury Candidate in activity. Although Candidate with a nice catch and shoots there again, taking back the advantage. Candidate's just landing too many clean punches on him. He's just, you know, taking them apart. There's a left hook for Candidate, but hey, Sean Bates yeah. has certainly was, come and stormed back oh, to make it a close there was round. A, there was a moment where I thought Bates was going to take back control of the round, but good oh. adjustment on Bates' on, on, uh, Candidate. on uh, Candidate's part to take back control of the round after Bates was looking like he was going to start to control it himself. A good battle this round, and good, good momentum swings back and forth between these two good fighters. There's an echoing right hand by Randy Candidate. I love how Candidate he incorporates the body punches and the head punches. He's not a, just a head hunter, you know. He yep. boxes, he moves. Good variation to but, his you attack. Know, he body and head. He's not not just a head hunter. And, and he can he counters to both sides too. It's not just he's leading. There's a nice sharp counter right hand there over the top of the Bates jab. And you know, no, puts the punches together nicely in bunches. And you see, even when he makes a defensive move, he doesn't make it too big. So therefore, he's able to fire back off of that defensive move. He's able to transition from defense to offense very quickly. Just outboxed him and confused him. And you see, look at the catch and shoots there. Although base was was undaunted, he kept kept firing off. So coming up next, the welterweights Juan Funes and Evron Graham. If Funes wasn't successful in that first matchup against Avron Graham, and, and Graham just out-hustled him in their previous meeting. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's one of those things where Funes just has to decide, okay, I want to win this round, because it was that's all the difference was the first time around. Graham just wanted it more than he did. Graham just lit up Funes, and Funes might be hurt, guys. Yeah, Graham, right when, he, right when he got to the center of the ring, he looked like the more fluid fighter, more relaxed, letting his hands go. 
He just seems like the overall better boxer, judging from right now and what I saw in the last fight. You know what else I think is cool about Team Combat League, guys, is that the individual team gloves. I think that's such a cool concept. Yeah. You have the logo on there and everything. Yeah, yeah it's uniformity. Great, great job with Team Combat League. Week three, Before off next week. week, a bye week, and then back two weeks from tonight, April 27th, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific time. That's what I like to see from Graham. He went right to the body, then he went right to the head. That's yeah, Fournes too ordinary in, in, in his inability to close the gap, really. I mean, he's giving one look, he's throwing the jab at the same speed, and not very active with it. Graham, once again, having an active round. If you're going to be ordinary, you better be a solid ordinary kind of a fighter with fundamentals. I'll tell you what, if you're going to be ordinary, you better be really busy. And, and, and Funes is both ordinary and not busy. So he's, he's, he's putting himself in a hold this round as well against Graham. The only thing I'm seeing Funes doing is getting hit. I'm not seeing him do any. The Graham is just, you know, he's taking him apart. Well, I love the body punching from Graham, especially in this round. He's really digging and sitting down in his punches, ripping it. the ribcage of Juan Funes. And you might be saying, okay, not, not everything's getting through because Funes has a high guard. But again, two things. One one is that nothing's firing back, really. So it's Graham is the only one getting getting shots off. And also, Funes is not unable to transition that defense to offense. He's just having those gloves up, but he's not firing off. We just talked about last round, our candidate does such a good job of catching and shooting, transitioning that defense to offense. Funes does not. Funes catches, catches a lot, but not, there's no firing back. He finally threw a couple of punches, but look at Graham. For every one or two punches, that Funes throws, Graham Ooh. retaliates with like nine or ten. This is, this is why Graham's winning the round. This is why uh, Funes really hasn't done anything, like I said previously, but get hit. You know, Graham's doing everything else, and that's going to win him the round. Dallas and LA looking for their first win of the season. New York City 3 and 0 on the year a win over DC 172 to 169 earlier tonight in the first half of our doubleheader. Graham Graham feeling he's confident. He got those hands down. He doesn't feel like Funes can hit him and he's you know what? He's not. Wherever you're watching this whether it's teamcombatleague.com or Fight Hub, home to Marcos Villegas our good friend. Thank you so much for joining us. Graham having the best of the exchanges over Juan Funes. That'll end the 15th. I love how he tried to go for the liver shot multiple times. I love that. Dominant round from Graham there. Hey, Pauly, what would you see? What was the score now since um, Dallas got that one? I had it going into these last six rounds. I had a 114-111 Dallas. And so far in these three rounds, I have had given Dallas two of them. Yeah. So the lead is increasing on the part of Dallas. We shall see what L.A. does to minimize that lead. Well, I mean, let's see if L.A., they got some work to do. And I think it's to the point, Paulie, and I am not, you know, obviously a mathematician or rocket scientist, but <laughs> I would say that you need a couple knockdowns if you're L.A. You don't yep. even need just a stoppage. You and need a couple knockdowns. And speaking of knockdowns, the last time these two met, Pannon was able to drop the pest tray with a check hook, so... But it, although it was otherwise competitive, so let's see if the Pestri is able to get something back here. The Pestri is strong, though, and he has a lot of oomph in his like in his jab and his punches. But, but Panin, nice just, jab there. Speaking of jab, you know, Panin is just a better boxer. But we'll see what changes this round. I'll tell you what, Panin is going to need probably another knockdown to help his team along any way he can. Good jab, Panin. And this is what is so exciting about Team Combat League is that let's say Panin does get a stoppage over De Pestri, then guess what? The scores get closer, and L.A., they still have a chance. You still have three more rounds to go, three separate matchups that can change the trajectory of who's going to take home the W. I'd be surprised if the stoppage between these two. These two are very, very evenly matched, even the first time around. Yeah, the past three, he seems more relaxed right now than Pannon, even from my observation. Nice hook there by Pannon, but even the knockdown in the, in, the, in the first time they saw each other was a check hook. It was a half a balance shot, half of a, uh, a punch that landed. I think rightfully called a knockdown, but nonetheless, it, the past three wasn't hurt. Just good skill and technique. Well, you say, you hear what they say about halftime adjustments. We have two intermissions in between every six rounds, but DePestre has used more of the adjustment of using his jab to be able to throw some of that heavy leather. In his previous meeting against Pannon, he was just throwing big power shots, telegraphing his punches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good body shots by DePestre. A little, little better shot selection this time around by DePestri. Mainly, he's using his jab. I mean, now he's able to convert that into a hook. Echoing has, right hand by DePestri. Because he has Pannon looking for the, for the jab, and he was able to turn it into a hook in right hand there. 
I just think DePestri is stronger. Left hook mm -hmm. by Vlad Panin, who lit up DePestri as he came forward. A left hook by DePestri, though. 75 seconds to go on the 16th. Panin needs to loosen up a little more. He knows he has the boxing skills. He just needs that like muscle memory. Everything just flow. Let his hands go. Good evenly match fight between these two guys. Good, two, two good skill guys. Well, when it comes to potential leaders for LA 10 Goose, I think Vlad Pannon, he's been a constant in the two times that we've seen him over the previous weeks. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. He's, he's, he's a consistent fighter for LA. But, ooh, oh, good left look by DePestre, followed by a right. This is a close round, man. This is going to be all the fight for here in the last 35 seconds. I think this round hangs in the balance, guys. Yeah. A crushing right hand by DePestre. Oh, right. Good hook by left hook. I think Dallas, you know, DePestre got this round just by activity and just punches. Hand was a little tense. He didn't throw as much. But I think it's 1 1 tonight for both of them. Yeah, unless Panning gets something back here in the last 20 seconds, I, I gotta agree with him here. The Pestry sitting down in his punches, and it's just mind blowing at what the jab can do for you. Yeah, absolutely. Small adjustments. A little short, a little short right hand by Panning, but I don't think it's enough. I think it's a Pestry round, and Dallas's lead continues to increase on my scorecard. Does LA have any chance of coming back, Paulie? I mean, they're gonna need numbers right now. They're gonna need some knockouts here. Knockouts, not just knockouts. Yeah, back to back. Some good work there. Good, 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 good jabs and, and, and short combinations there. We just saw a good right hand there on that replay by Depestri as he threw a shorter shots on the inside. A little bit of holding and hitting there on the part of Depestri as he held Bannon behind the head, head while using the uppercut with the other hand. And there's a sharp right hand over the top of Bannon's jab. So good what is your score guys. right now, Paulie? I mean, as you see, you have, uh, what, Dallas? I haven't, these I haven't added up in the second half, okay. but I'll tell you what, going into the last third, I had 114-111 Dallas, and this... This go round, I've got Dallas winning three of the four rounds. Okay. So, that, so that means that lead has increased. Yes. Well, right now for LA, final two rounds to go in this head to head matchup Alejandro Silva and Mauricio King. Alejandro Silva needs a big round for LA 10 because Ricky Funes, I'm sure, is urging on his middleweight to go out and try to make a big impact and try to get a knockdown or two. And Silva is very capable of doing that. Ooh, good. There's an echoing right hand there, right on the left cheek right, right, of right, King. Right. Good body shot there again. King trying to be busy. And you, see, you can see Ooh, a good left, left hook, hook right there hook. by Alejandro Silva. Yeah, he makes his shots count. He's not as active as King, but he makes it count. There's a lot of King's punches just hitting his arms. They're not going right, right by Silva. They're not actually landing punches. Yeah, I think King should be fainting to try to get Silva to fight a little bit and maybe get those hands out of position. You see Mauricio King, his eyes are wide open because he has been clocked with some heavy leather from Alejandro Silva. Also with the guard Silva gives you, you can paw down that lead hand of, of, of Silva. And like you can use your left hand to paw down that, that lead left hand of, of Silva that's close to his guard and then try to come over the top of it with a big overhand right. We've seen guys in the, in the pros do that. I remember friend in the Vargas used to do that a lot, you know? When it comes to strengths for teams, I think that LA 10 use one of their key strengths is the middleweight division. When you have a Vlad Panning and Alejandro Silva that you can trot out there to compete against an opponent and a fellow I, team's, you know, middleweight competitors. I'm inclined to agree with you, Ray. The only problem LA has is that might be their only strength so far. Well, what we've seen. Like King, he's throwing punches, but if you really look closely, not, most of them aren't landing. Silva, he's taking his time, he's throwing less punches, but they're landing. Yep, yep. The judges are seeing them. Better, the better technique on, uh, is definitely on the part of Silva, and he showed that the first time in the first go-around between these two. And as you said, Ray, the middleweights are, are, are an asset for L.A. Also, too, a Yana Verdusco for L.A. 10. Now, I see that, uh, yeah, but, well, but, right. but Dallas Ooh. is ahead. Oh, down no. Great right hand. King, my goodness. Great There's right a hand. knockdown for Alejandro Silva. Wow, Ray. Right. Right, Verdusco's a good asset, too, for L.A. Well, there is a momentum shift for L.A. Alejandro Silva with the knockdown as we have Ooh. 43 seconds. King. Oh, down goes King, and that's the second knockdown. Is it ruled a knockdown? It's wow. over! Oh my goodness! Alejandro Silva stops Brazil King, and that's a major point swing for LA Tengus. Great
Sorry, two, two shin, great boxing, you know. And like Polly said, he needed a knockout, and he did. Two, knock, two knockdowns automatically with a knockout, guys. So in case you're going at home, you're wondering why the stoppage. Automatically, to, to avoid big suspensions, because these guys got to compete every week. There's two knockdowns, there's an automatic stoppage. 10-7 round for L.A. Their ace, their ace came in and did the job. And you know what? Silva had a knockdown against Cangelosi when they also fought against New York. So this guy, right this guy's hand. power. Brutal. Sweeping right hand. That's what I'm saying. That sweeping right hand's coming back. And, and I let me go ahead, and I very rarely do I ever do this, but who said that Alejandro Silva had the propensity to be able to do this, guys? Oof. But I'll tell you what. Did not forecast that. Yeah. But we, you know what? We saw it already the first time we saw him, you know, against Angelosi. You know, Angelosi is a good is a good ace for New York. But Silva was able to get a, a knockdown the first time around that he saw Angelosi, and here he gets the stoppage. Silva is a big ace for L.A. They've just got to be able to work that momentum to the rest of their weight classes. Let's see now with the heavyweights. This gets interesting. A 10-7 round. I think LA needs another big round. Let's see if they get it. Well, Siliga. now we have Sia Siliga against Adrian Taylor. Siliga for LA. Adrian Taylor for Dallas. A close matchup yet again between two teams that are looking to improve their standings. These two teams, however, looking for their first win of the season. New York City 3-0 on the year. LA and Dallas looking for victory number one. They are both 0-1 so far in the season. Yeah, Silva, he changed the momentum. Uh, I think it was the best performance of the night. And we have to see what um, Silica can do from that. It's all on him now if he really wants to win for LA. Well, now you go with the battle-tested combat sports veteran in a Sia Silica for LA if you're Ricky Funes. For Dallas, if you are AC Bright, you turn to Adrian Taylor, who has been in the trenches, sparring wise with the likes of Errol Spence and Jermel Charlo. Yeah, Taylor has a propensity to be active. Ooh, good punch good shots by Silica, but the problem Silica has is I don't know about his conditioning, man. He get, seems to get tired very easily. He already looks a little bit fatigued here, and his intensity has dropped. And we've only gone a minute, and it's not like he was that active. He, they, they need a big run out of this guy right now. Yeah, Paulie, like, it's a big detriment for him, his fatigue. That's, that's what's going to make him not progress as a fighter. Boy, things have tightened up on the scorecards. That stoppage for Alejandro Silva over Mauricio King. Good combination. Cut there. into this Dallas lead. So we're trying to take it to, to Taylor. Again, he, he, he needs to cut off the ring. I mentioned this in the first time around. He, he's, he's following Taylor. He needs to cut him off. He's going to he put that pressure. Hey, Paulie, what's the current score on your scorecards? Well, we'll allow him to tally that off and, uh, you know, coming up. But I do believe that it is very close, Amir, to your point. Yeah, I'm just, it's very, cl very close, very close fight. So now, who is going to bite down on their mouthpiece? Who's going to dig deep in these final know. 63 seconds? Yeah, and I haven't done the math yet, but I'll tell you what, I, I know LA mathematically needs at least a knockdown on my card, maybe maybe the stoppage. So they need something big from Sia Silagum in order to be able to try to swing things in their favor. And I'll tell you what, in comparison to the way Taylor fought the first round, he's kind of cruising here. He's giving Silaga a chance to win this round. He's very relaxed. Pretty much I'm going to be like when I get home this weekend in Chicago. Thing about Taylor, it really shows his sparring experience with Spence and all these other prominent fighters. He's using that for his advantage, and he's showing us tonight. I think, though, Taylor is allowing Silica to hang around, and I think Silica's outworking him. Yeah, this round he's taking it to him, and Taylor kind of has gone into kind of cruise mode this round. It may not cause Dallas. Who knows? I, I, I believe Silica needs at least a knockdown here. And Big it, right hand and on it, the left ear of Taylor. And to his credit, he went searching for it the whole round. He did. Well, see a Silica show. There's a reason why he's been in there against the Ooh. world's best. They are swinging for the fences to end. And that'll end the 18 rounds. Wow, what a head-to-head -head matchup between Dallas and L.A. Alejandro Silva certainly has made things a bit more exciting. As you know what, a few toss-up rounds, potentially, I still believe that Dallas will likely get the win and improve to one and one. But LA came to fight and they brought it, especially down the stretch. Honestly, like Silva, it, it's, when I saw that right hand, it was picture perfect. It was a beautiful right hand. He led the momentum and I think LA won that last round as well. And how about the elder statesman in Sia Silicum 
with LA, their hopes and dreams riding on both Alejandro Silva and Cia Silagum. Silva gets the stoppage, a 10 7 round. Then Cia Silagum, being the combat sports veteran that he is, after he got worked by Adrian Taylor to come back and take it to the youngster. Like you say, who wants it more? Like Paulie was stating earlier, who wants it more? And that's if, if you're going to push yourself to the limit and push yourself to no return. That's going to get you the win a lot of time. I'll tell you okay, what, guys. Paulie, so got, how do you have it? I got another one-point uh, match. Oh, come here. on. I got a 169-168. Oh, the, the, the my difference, gosh. The difference, here, the difference here with my scorecard with New York and... Um, and, and and uh, uh, yes, and, and DC and DC, DC. is that it, it was a momentum was going back and forth. One would take the lead, then the other would take the lead. This particular matchup, though, I had Dallas the whole way with LA trying to claw their way back the whole time, and they did. They clawed their way back, but I got them coming up a point short despite that. I had Dallas winning the whole time, but LA managed to close the gap, but not enough to get the win. While when it came to New York against DC, I actually had the momentum going back and forth where New York took the lead, then then DC took the lead, and it kept going back and forth until New York finally pulled it out in the end. So I got two one-point scorecards tonight, but they, they came about in different ways. This particular one-point scorecard, Dallas led the whole way, and it was uh, too little too late for LA uh, in their comeback attempt, and I had them coming up a point short. But let's see how the judges score it, Amir, because, you know, uh, that kind of scorecard could go either way, I guess, on the judges' card. 100%. We'll like we said before, everyone judges things differently. <laughs> Different style of judging, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, there's one or two rounds that could go, you know, maybe to one side or the other. A good matchup for these two teams as well. Good, good entertaining stuff. And, um, and again, for the fans at home, you know, this is a regular thing for Team Combat League. We'll be off next week and we'll come back on the 27th. But uh, a lot of constant action. As you can see, the way the format is set up, that's the way it's always going to go. Because every fighter comes in one round at a time, fresh, and they go right to it. And we're here with Ray to, for him Wait, to announce the scorecards. See waiting, victorious. waiting for these scorecards now from Ray Flores to yes, see sir. who the official judges winner is. Again, on my scorecard. I have Dallas winning by a point at 169-168. Let's hear Ray give the scorecard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our second half of our doubleheader has come to a close. What a matchup between Dallas and L.A. We give them a round of applause for 18 exciting rounds. What a matchup all night long between these two stellar teams. After 18 rounds, we go to our final score total. We have Dallas 171, LA 167. So Dallas is now one and one. Goose. Now I want to go ahead and grab A.C. Bryant. Where is A.C. Bryant? All right. So, yeah, absolutely. We're here with the victorious head coach of the Dallas Enforcers, A.C. Bryant, 171 to 167 for L.A. 10 Goose. A.C., what did you feel was your key to victory here tonight? Oh, like I said last week or last time we were here, uh, we have we go deep. And so uh, I think that was our strategy. When we went recruiting uh, fighters, we didn't go for just a superstar. We went for a complete team. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Team Combat League uh, for giving this opportunity. Shout out to my wife, Yuka, kids, A.C., 4 through 5, and Vivian and Hannah. Just thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, it's great doing this for Team Combat League. Hey, Dallas is here. So what stood out to you when it comes to from an uh, individual fighter's performance? Did anybody really stand out to you? Uh, uh, for sure, everybody did what they were supposed to do. But obviously, uh, AJ did, uh, did an amazing job. Uh, we had uh, Montu doing an absolute amazing job. Of course, that had to be, I want to say, the biggest up, up, upset uh, of the night would have to be uh, Montoya versus uh, the Mighty Mo. He did exactly what we needed to do. We came in with the game plan, understanding we needed a box and showing everybody know that we are just more than the uh, one trick pony so what is it like to get your first win with team combat league you guys are 500 there's a bye week next week and uh, obviously two weeks from now we are back and you guys will once again compete in your third outing 
Well, I'm just going to tell you, uh, it feels good to uh, get the first win. We should have won the last one if we had everybody fight. But, you know, some people don't have the, uh, the gusto to put in the ring. But it is what it is. I want to thank everybody for this opportunity. We're coming back next week. Like I said, Dallas is here to stay. We're here to make a statement. And everybody but he put on notice that Dallas is here. How much do you want a playoff berth? There are six teams competing, vying for four playoff positions. Uh, really, there's not six teams competing. There's five teams. We already got our slot. Everybody else is going for second. Baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Enforcers, and my goodness, Bowie and Amir, this is a very happy Dallas Enforcers team. Gentlemen, back to you. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, a great, terrific win for Dallas. Also, LA, uh, some credit to LA as well, because you know, it looked like the way they got things started and coming off the loss they had the for the, the one week one, you're looking at this team and you're thinking to yourself, do they have enough to compete in this league? But you know what? They made their way back into this battle and made it close. Dallas held on for the win. But um, uh, something to look forward to from LA as well because they brought some momentum into the later part of the, of the, of the competition here tonight against Dallas. And it's, it'll be interesting to see because now at 0-2, they've got to bring it. They've got to start right away. But a credit to Dallas, the way they look, the way they won, the, the depth of their team, as their coach just said. And uh, looking more forward to seeing them as well. Now they go to 1-1, one and, one, and uh, we'll see how, the, how the, the season progresses. And we're back in two weeks. Paulie, I think some building blocks when it comes to both teams. As I look at the Dallas Enforcers with AC Bryant. To me, I look at guys like Randy Kennedy, Andre Ewo, who I thought was spectacular for Dallas. And I thought that they really started strong. They held on in the end, but it just goes to show you why every round is so important. Exactly. And, and, that, and that's why you need that depth. You know, you either jump out to a good score, a, a good lead, and then wind up holding on, or sometimes, you know, you wind up needing those late rounds and your team gets it. When you have that depth, that's what you're able to do. It Tonight, Dallas jumped out to a very big lead in the beginning and then wound up you know the rest of the matchups ended up being kind of 50 50 the rest of the night but you know what that's all they needed they need they, they had being able to jump out that to that big lead where able was able to take them to the victory tonight and we look forward to seeing both them and LA in the future absolutely Amir what a night that we had here at Team Combat League to be honest New York and Dallas those are the teams that are on my mind the most to see who that can actually win go to the playoffs those are the two most impressive teams I've seen thus far well also team. for LA 10 goose you know I think that they have you look at the middleweight division Vlad Penn and Alejandro Silva. Silva getting the stoppage and also Iana Verdusco. But tonight it was New York City defeating DC. They improved to 3 0. DC falls to 0 1. And then it was Dallas getting the win over LA 10 Goose. Dallas is now 1 1 on the season. LA 10 Goose 0 2 on the season. A bye week next week. We're coming back in two weeks, April 27th, on behalf of Amir Tyson, Paulie Malinaji, and the Gilmores, Chris and Christian. I'm Ray Flores saying so long from Mohegan Sun. We'll see you in two weeks. A bye week with week four of Team Combat League. What a night. Good night from Mohegan Sun here in Uncasville, Connecticut.